We are very grateful to God that for over three decades now, uh, ecumenical leaders from the denominations here that have offices here in Marquette and have congregations across the Upper Peninsula are able to come together probably four or five times a year for lunch and conversation. And those have been very precious times. And we have talked about common concerns and common joys and common issues. And so it was then about, about almost two years ago that an incident occurred in my family which uh, made a very large difference. A cousin of mine, um, her grandson died of a heroin overdose. And I brought that up to our ecumenical colleagues here, our Episcopal, Roman Catholic, and Methodist colleagues. And we talked about our, our own personal experiences with people in our own churches and in our own families who have had um, struggles with addictions of all types. And we began to think about and pray about and reflect on how the faith communities, how the Christian community could make a difference in this work. And um, um, Bishop Durfler here suggested that we start thinking about what can we learn, what can we first learn about this uh, addiction problem, struggle that occurs in the Upper Peninsula. And so we convened a round table of various uh, groups and organizations that serve the needs of uh, persons who are struggling with addictions here in the Upper Peninsula. And we had state legislators, and we had a prosecuting attorney, and we had people from the social work community and from the hospitals and from the social ministry areas of our churches, Lutheran and Catholic churches and others, that gathered together one day and we spent time thinking about how uh, the church or how the faith community and how the communities in general can help those who are struggling with addiction. And we learned from each other that day. And then we decided we had to begin to think about what our congregations can be about and to do. And so it's been a, uh, a fruitful experience that which has culminated so far at least in this, in this statement that has been prepared and which is now being released to you. My name is Reverend Christy Hentz and I pastor um, Mark and Hope United Methodist Church um, along with my husband Reverend Christopher Hentz and um, I am just um, really honored today to be here to represent my district superintendent uh, Reverend Albert Dulworth who was not able to join us today. We all understand that the problems of addiction are complex and I come to you as a wife and a mother and a pastor um, and a member of this community. My husband and I have teenage sons and so um, we understand that in addressing this problem of addiction in our communities, we have to deal with the whole person. And it's not surprising that we get overwhelmed, that any effective treatment plan has to care for the whole person. And we have to provide comprehensive support for physical and spiritual and emotional facets of those caught up in the addiction cycle. It affects all of us. Uh, we all cope with the instability in our communities that addiction causes. And also we're aware that addiction crosses all possible boundaries, cultural boundaries, ethnic and economic boundaries, and that the struggles that are brought on by addiction include but are not limited to separation, that those struggling with addiction feel isolation and exclusion from society, unemployment, homelessness, poverty, medical and mental health issues, crime, domestic violence, managing stress and managing hopelessness. The solutions are as complex as the problem and solutions that are developed need to address the unique needs of each person. Our social systems are straining to provide needed funding and care and we need a constellation of services, both acute and sustained, to successfully address this problem. 
We are called to be faithful stewards of what has been entrusted to us, most importantly, to care for one another, to find real and concrete ways to affirm the whole worth of each individual, to recognize and respond to brokenness, to be an instrument of education, healing, and restoration. And so we as faith communities come together to advocate for ways that every member of our communities can be engaged in making positive contributions to be recognized as valuable members of our communities. We're looking for ways to provide stability and involvement, looking for redemptive opportunities. After all, we in the church are in the business of hope and extending hope to each individual. Solutions to this complex problem must understand addiction as a human rights concern, affirm the fundamental belief in the possibility of transformation in the life of each individual and in our world. We have chosen to address the problem of addictions because reaching out to those in need is essential to living a Christian life. We are called by the Lord to live out our faith not just behind church walls, but in loving service to our community. The Bible exhorts us to care for the needs of our fellow human beings. For example, it says in the letter of James, quote, If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body. What good is it? End of quote. As followers of Jesus, we cannot simply utter pious platitudes and turn our backs on our sisters and brothers who are suffering from addictions. The love of Christ moves us to embrace and walk with them. Moreover, we fellow Christian leaders act together as citizens. A good citizen cultivates the virtue of patriotism, which embodies the love of our country, our state, and our local community. To be truly patriotic means to look beyond our own needs as individuals and offer ourselves in service to society. To be patriotic means to live with the common good in central focus. We address the problem of addictions as good citizens who want to make a difference. And so we have pledged to work together to make two initial steps at this point. We have pledged to study further the problems of addiction so that we can all have a better understanding. And we have pledged to educate our people, our congregations, about the problems of addictions in Michigan's Upper Peninsula and to make known to our people the treatment options that are available to them. And finally, we have pledged to work together to advocate for adequate funding for the treatment centers that are there so that those who need help are able to obtain the help that they need. Thank you.